Welcome back everyone. In this segment, we will talk about BLAST, the main computational tool that enable us to search the huge sequence databases that we mentioned in our previous segment. If we know the names of the gene or protein we are looking for, and the organism that it comes from, we can simply retrieve it from the database based on the tags that are attached to each database entry. However, in the study I mentioned in the previous section, the question was whether a given bacteria contains a protein that is similar enough to a human protein to trigger a response that will eventually lead to autoimmune episode. Clearly, we cannot use protein names to conduct such a search, as we don't know if such protein exists at all, and surely not their identity. This is just a specific example for a very common task in bioinformatics, to search a database for all the sequences that are similar to a given query sequence. In theory, we could use the dynamic programming approach that we described in the previous unit. This would involve taking our query sequence and aligning it to each one of the sequences in the database using either global or local alignment to obtain a list of sequences that show similarity above a defined cutoff. However, since the number of sequences in the database is huge and the dynamic programming approach is rather slow, this approach is not practical. Thus, more efficient computational tools were needed. The first such program was FAST-A, which was developed by Lippmann and Pearson in 1985. For some reason, this program did not gain much popularity, but it left its legacy in the form of the well-known FAST-A format for sequence representation, which you have seen in the practice lessons, and is used today in almost all software packages that deal with biological sequences. In 1990, BLAST, which stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, was published by Stephen Altschul and co-workers from the NCBI. It quickly became the main search engine in bioinformatics. Sufficient to say that the original paper has more than 67,000 scientific citations and more than 200,000 BLAST queries are sent to the NCBI every day. So how do FAST-A and BLAST work? The main premise of both these algorithms is that the similarity along a relative long stretch of DNA or protein sequence is highly likely to manifest itself in several short exact matches in FAST-A or short highly similar matches in BLAST. These short matches can be found quickly and can be used as anchors or seeds for subsequent extension steps. BLAST has undergone several algorithmic development since its inception in 1990 and I will briefly describe here the main steps in the core of the algorithm. After a pre-processing step, which I will refer to in a minute, the first step is to divide the query sequence into short overlapping words of a default length of three amino acids for proteins and 11 nucleotides for DNA sequences. Each word creates a list of additional words that are highly similar to it using the BLASM matrices that we discussed when we talked about sequence alignment to decide which words are considered highly similar. Thus, for example, if the original word was the amino acid three-letter word PMG, which stands for proline, methionine, and glycine, the list can also contain PHG, which stands for proline, histidine, and glycine, and additional highly similar words. All of the words in the list are mapped to all the sequences in the database. This can be done efficiently, since in the pre-processing step, all the sequences in the database are indexed, as in a dictionary. So finding matching short words can be done without scanning the entire sequence each time. This is a bit like Google search engine indexing the content of websites in order to allow for efficient search. But remember, 
בלאס פרי דייטד גוגל בי אבאוט א דקייד. זן, זה אלגוריתם טרייס טו אקסטנט זה מאץ' אראונד זה סיד, טו אדנטיפיי וואט איז נון אז היי סקורינג סגמנט פרס או HSP. In some cases, neighboring HSPs can be merged to form longer matches. In the final step, all HSPs with high statistical significance are reported. Statistical significance is determined based on a rather complicated analysis, but it results in an E-value, which is a number of matches with similar or higher score that can be expected to be found randomly, given the length and the composition of the query sequence and the size of the database. In the study I mentioned earlier, we searched for human proteins that are similar to the sequence of proteins from the Streptococcus A bacteria. The output includes a list and a graphical representation of the matches. We found that there are many human proteins that are similar to the bacterial calcium transporting ATPs. However, only one was a cardiac protein. This match is highly significant with 38% sequence identity along 79% of the query lengths. The expected number of random matches with this level of identity is e to the power of minus 144, virtually zero. The search took a few seconds in the NCBI website. After additional analysis, we were able to pinpoint the common sequence segment that is the source of the common epitope. The BLAST program is freely available and one can download it to run on a local server. But the level of free service from the NCBI site is so good that most people run their queries online. We will obtain hands-on experience using BLAST during the practice lesson. There are several variants of the BLAST program that allows us to search a nucleotide query against the nucleotide database, a protein sequence against proteins, but also nucleotides against predicted protein sequences, and vice versa, using virtual translation of different reading frames. An interesting variant is PsyBlast, which is an iterative procedure in which a query sequence is used to find a group of similar sequences, Those sequences are aligned to each other using multiple sequence alignment technique to form a profile, which is run as a new query against the database. This process iterates until the consensus sequence converges. PsyBlast is much more sensitive in picking up distant evolutionary relationship than a standard protein-protein blast. As I mentioned, BLAST is one of the most important tools in bioinformatics, and the increase in search speed achieved using the algorithm was crucial for our ability to search the ever-growing sequence databases. When we will talk later in the course about next-generation sequencing, we will see that such experiment provides so much sequence data that aligning this data to the genome requires even more sophisticated algorithmic techniques. Just as traffic increases every time new roads are built. So in bioinformatics, there are always larger challenges producing larger and larger data sets and requiring ever improved algorithms and computational tools for their analysis. Maya and Ronen, I hope that you understand now the basic idea behind BLAST and the importance of this search tool to bioinformatics and medicine. In the next segment, we will talk about databases that store information about human genomic variations and how such information can be usefully displayed.